narcissist to thrive in life while I'm over here suffering in silence? Why is it difficult for people to see the truth about this person? They are clearly manipulating others for their own profit. I just don't understand why God would allow that narcissist to treat me like that. Why doesn't God do anything? Can a narcissist not change? Why do they keep doing evil things when they know it is wrong to do so? With these questions, let's find out what God will do to a narcissist according to the Bible. Well, to be clear, the word narcissism is not found anywhere in the Bible. However, there are numerous references to the dangers of selfishness, self-promotion, and idolizing oneself. When you read these Bible passages, it becomes abundantly clear God thoroughly warned us against practicing the traits that are often associated with the true narcissist. Therefore, it's good to study what the Bible says on what to do to a narcissist so we can avoid thinking they are getting away with anything and so we can make sure we are not falling into narcissism. Number 1. God will let the narcissist choose their own selfish misery. When you read the Bible through worldly eyes, you can seem like a very unattractive way to live your life. For example, Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 says, In humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let's look at some other passages. In Philippians 2 verse 2 says, Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Philippians 2 verse 18 says, Likewise you also should be glad and rejoice with me. These are not appealing to people who don't understand the whole context of biblical self-sacrifice, but, when you read verses like this in context, there's always a clear teaching that self-sacrifice is one of the most beneficial things you can do for yourself. God commands us to love Him and to love others, are actually the roadmap to the most joyful lifestyle possible. As Jesus said in Acts 20 verse 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And Matthew 16 verse 25 says, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. A narcissist would never know the deep joy that comes to service because they are completely obsessed with serving themselves and manipulating others into serving them too. They are a black hole. They can never be satisfied because they do not understand where true happiness and satisfaction are found and try to take more and more and give less and less. They are only increasing their own misery. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3 says, If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. It means that those who do not love have nothing. In John 15 verse 13 also says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Love is to sacrifice yourself for the benefit of another. Thus, those who do not sacrifice for others end up with nothing themselves. God's warnings about selfishness are clear. Thus, he let us choose this misery if we want to since we've been fairly warned. God does not even need to actively inflict the punishment of joylessness unto a narcissist because they are inflicting this misery unto themselves. Number 2. God will let them burn every bridge so they become an island of loneliness. The more and more people they stab in the back, the more and more people know they are backstabbers. Thus, less people will show them their back. For example, Paul was harmed by many people throughout his ministry. At times, he didn't name them, but, at other times, perhaps when their sins were especially dangerous and people needed to be warned Paul did name them. We can read these instances in 1 Timothy 1 verses 19 to 20 and 2 Timothy 4 verses 10 to 16. In any case, Paul assures us that wicked people will eventually always be exposed. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 9 says, But they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. In Romans chapter 16 verses 17 through 18, 
he wrote a warning especially relevant to our discussion about narcissism. This verse says I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught, avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. As Christians obey God's word and avoid people who serve their own appetites, slowly but surely, these people will burn every bridge and become an island of loneliness with no one who trusts them. Psalm 36 verses 1 to 2 says, Fret not yourself because of evildoers, be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Number 3. God will expose them so others will not be hurt and so people will have an example of God's punishment. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 19 to 20 says, Do not admit a charge against an elder except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may stand in fear. God will not be mocked. Galatians 6 verse 7. We all reap what we sow. Galatians 6 verses 7 to 9. In love, God gives people time to repent. 2 Peter 3 verse 9. Eventually, however, those who reject Christ will be punished if they never repent. God exposes people's wickedness so that their downfall would be a warning to us all not to follow in their paths. In James 3 verses 15 to 18 warned us, but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. A narcissist who never repents will be punished by God. May we all repent of any narcissistic tendencies that reside in our own sinful flesh. Through the new nature in Christ, we can live selfless, joyful lives full of love for God and others. Number 4. God will change the heart of the narcissist. We often hear that most psychologists and diagnose people with narcissistic personality disorder will say there's no cure for this sickness. Well, that's not entirely true. Not when our Lord Jesus said nothing is impossible with God in Matthew 19 verse 26. We look back at the life of Paul or Saul before his conversion. The story of Paul's conversion is indeed fascinating. Before his transformation, his mission was to eradicate the early Christian church, which he saw as a threat. He even obtained letters authorizing him to arrest followers of Jesus in Damascus. However, everything changed dramatically on the road to Damascus. Paul's life was transformed after encountering Jesus on the road to Damascus. He became a humble servant of Christ, dedicating his life to spreading the gospel and serving others. So God can change even the hardened heart. We ask how can God change the heart of a narcissist if the narcissists themselves don't repent? Well, that's our job as true believers to pray for them. In James 5 verse 16 says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. If you're married and you think your husband has the traits of a narcissist, you have the power to open the floodgates of heaven through your prayers on behalf of your spouse, or even to your parents, or siblings, or your friends. There's no one more qualified to pray for their relationship with Christ than you. We can pray with faith. Prayer has the power to change circumstances, even drastically, because it is an invitation for the power of God to move in a situation. While mitigating factors may affect the outcome, the fact remains that when we pray within the will of God, not contradictory to His laws, plans, or nature, He will move powerfully on our behalf. With the power of God invited into a situation, there's literally no limit to how it can change people's lives. Miraculous healings, dramatic rescues, instantaneous circumstantial changes, 
broken chains, restored lives, mended hearts, cast out spirits, the list goes on and on. Yes, our fervent prayer can change even a narcissist. If this was helpful content to you, please share it with other people who may need to know and hear this. Thank you and may God bless you.